This is part seven of the comparison between Grenadier LC300 Patrol and Defender and we're going to be running the vehicles up a rutted climb to compare cross axle differential locks versus traction control in the case of the Defender mud rut mode versus rock mode and we're going to see what other driving tips we can pick up along the way. Please watch at least part one of the series where I introduce the vehicles and also every other part will demonstrate the vehicles, highlight specific problems and then explain what those problems are. So first up we've got the LC300 relying only on its traction control and let's take a look and see how well that works plus look at how well it manages to keep all the wheels on the ground compared to what you'll see later on with the other vehicles. It's a little bit of slip there but it works instantly, sends torque to the right front wheel and the car comes up. Now here's how track conditions can change. So this is 10 minutes later, the other three vehicles had had a go and that has changed the track conditions. First of all because the other vehicles have disturbed it with, with their tyres and also it's got just that little bit maybe more dry, more wet, taking something off, don't know. But something's changed because the 300 now can't get it. It's now spinning, as you can see, all four wheels, and that didn't happen beforehand. So that is actually a bit of a track conditions change, and it's really interesting just to see that happen over such a short period of time. Now we run the 300 again, but this time we've got the front and rear cross axle lockers engaged and you can see that even though the Toyota's traction control is really, really good, in this case, the cross axle lockers are better. Now we've got the Nissan Patrol Y62 and that's running with its rear locker in only. It does have brake traction control active on the front axle. We did mean to do one without but um, either didn't capture it on video or the driver didn't put it in or misbriefed him or whatever else. So we've only got runs with the rear locker in. Now you can see that both rear wheels are spinning um, and the front right wheel is also spinning now so the car's really not going anywhere. It's doing the best it can. It, it's now tyre limited. It's got a slightly longer wheelbase than the other vehicles and that's probably not, not helping it there either. Sometimes otherwise it would be an advantage but it really depends on the situation. So the driver is going to give it another go and we'll see how that works. Slightly more momentum. And you can see it comes up quite nicely this time. Just a fraction more momentum needed. Second run for the Nissan again 10 minutes later and a similar result gets to that point and you can see both wheels and rear axle spinning, front right spinning, front left spinning, it's, it's not going to happen. Now there's no point sitting there spinning the wheels to oblivion, you, you've got to go back and you've just got to go back far enough ideally so that you've got the, at least the rear wheels fairly level, somewhere you can launch from and then just add even half a kilometre an hour extra momentum and then you should come up. But it doesn't quite work there because the driver just hesitates just at the wrong point just to rob momentum. So you just got to go back a bit. And you can do that several times. Each time just add just a fraction more momentum and that's more effective than sort of sitting there and just pressing your foot to the floor and hoping.
It's going to go back a bit further this time. And you'll see it's, it's barely any more momentum, but it's enough to get through. And sometimes changing the line where the wheels are pointing can also help. You can see, there we come through now. Now it's the turn of the Defender in mud ruts mode. We'll run it in rock mode in a moment. Lifting a wheel more than the cars have been through so far. Get stuck at the same place. That front right wheel is doing everything it can, but it really needs more than sort of two and a half wheels on the ground for it to move forwards. So we just use that trick of just going backwards just a little bit, not too far. And then launching it from there, typically second low, left foot on the brakes, bring the revs up and then use just a little bit of momentum, a bit of right hand down, let the tyres grip and over she goes. Now we've got the Defender in rock mode, which should tighten the traction control up. But let's take a look and it comes to halt in exactly the same place and appears to behave very similarly in this condition to mud ruts. Now if you want to look at different terrain response modes, I've done all of that with a Discovery 5 in this video. And on this channel there will be a comparison of all the different L663 Defender modes coming in the next few weeks. Just go back about half a metre, just very slowly back. Now it's the turn of the Grenadier and before it starts I stopped the test because there's something which I want to take a look at which I've noticed earlier on. Okay so again this is the, have a look at that, look at that, it's powering. See that? Why is this not covered with a bash plate? You have to ask yourself. Okay, that's done. So up comes the Grenadier. Now we're running it without its cross axle lockers in, but always the centre lock. The reason for that is you don't always want to have to put the lockers in, and not all Grenadiers come with the front and rear axle lock, so it's fair to try and run it without, as we did for the LC300 and the other cars. So you can see for yourself what's happening here it's pretty good axle flex wheels are pretty much on the ground but that brake traction control is just letting it down <laughs>
and a bit more momentum. Just that last bit. So here's the final successful one. You can see a lot more momentum needed than the other cars, a lot more power, a lot more drama, but it does in fact get there. Now let's take a look from behind. And now let's get those cross axle front and rear lockers in and look at how slowly and controlled the vehicle can come up makes a huge difference equals the LC 300 I think So in this video again Toyota showed us that modern brake traction control is very nearly as good as cross axle lockers but not quite yet. Suspension flex definitely helped that's why the LC300 did best and the Grenadier um, did so well as well with both its, its lockers in and sometimes cross axle lockers are the best uh, you know both LC300 and Grenadier really really showed that. Now with the Defender the mud ruts versus rock mode really didn't make any discernible difference and that's not unusual again look at my l64 l462 discovery video um, for a bit more on that we will do more on the defender shortly and that technique of going back even half a meter then trying again can work basically trying to get the wheels level and then try it just one more time with just a little bit more momentum possibly wagging the steering wheel and finally tracks can change rapidly even over a few minutes and after a few cars have gone by so I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, you know where the comment section is and thanks for watching.